I'm gonna need scrappy, dappy do to grow up and stop being a grown man child and, and talk to your baby mama. If you over her like you over her, then you wouldn't have no problem talking to her. I'm just saying. What's going on, y'all? It's your favorite Auntie Momo, and I am back again with another episode review of Family Reunion Love and Hip Hop, y'all. This is season one, episode two. It don't have no name to it. Um, before we get into this review, first of all, my apologies. I do know that this review is later than niggas being out in the club till four in the morning i know this review is late it's late as hell but hear me out it was a whole lot a whole lot of going on and i know that don't got nothing to do with nothing but still i got a review for y'all um make sure you a like sharing subscribing all of that to my channel to all of my new subscribers hey y'all what y'all niggas been up to you know y'all see about just chilling or whatever i know you're looking at me like auntie what's them on your eyes i know girl because look here I don't normally do my lashes, but I had this company that sent me these lashes when they sent me this hair, right? So I figured, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting ready to take this hair out of my hair and do another style anyway, because I had another company that sent me some more hair. You know what I'm saying? Y'all just got to go with the money reside. So I figured I'd go ahead and put these lashes on. These are like some 3D. I don't know what kind of lashes, but these is them. Now look here. I am so new to the lash game. I don't know nothing about the lash game. It is not my ministry. You know what I'm saying? Um, so y'all let me know if I did me a good job. This one over here, I'm not going to lie. Me and her have been having a little talk because I don't know if y'all can notice it or not, but up right up, up, up in here, you know what I'm saying? She was kind of testing me. She's kind of testing me a little bit. And, and when I look far back, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, damn, bitch, you like you got popped in your motherfucking eye. And I didn't. It's this lash testing me. You know what I'm saying? But I own it. It don't own me. You know what I'm saying? And plus, I feel a little bit of cuteness or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I got this review ready for y'all. Um, I'm loving this new little route or whatever that they are going with the love and hip hop. I don't know if they're trying to clean up their image or whatever it is, but I am loving the whole family vibe, the way people are able to talk things out and move past things. I am loving it, y'all. So I got this review for, uh, ready for y'all. So hopefully y'all are ready for it. I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it, y'all. Y'all, it starts off with um little teeny fizzle pop. In April, they getting their stuff together because Fizz is in charge of the field day, right? So they're going to have like different field events, like three-legged races and sack potato race and, you know, just different stuff they're going to do. And so, like I said, Fizz is in charge of that. April is there helping them. So it's kind of awkward between the both of them because supposedly they haven't seen each other in nine months since the last time they was together. Now, they claim they tried to go to counseling. They tried to work it out. It just didn't work out. Fizz said that he had broke it off because he needed to go and take some time and get himself together. April claims you never called me. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, Fizz, I can't, I, 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 you know, I don't like Fizz. I'm sorry, I hate to say that. I just don't really see it for Fizz. We have seen season after season of him being a womanizing, um, you know, the hoe. And you want the best for Teeny Fizzle Pop. You want the, the best for Drew. But it just it, that's just not the type of nigga he is. Now, he claims that him and April didn't have sex the night before, that he just walked her back to her, uh, her room, and that he left and went on to his room. Now, Fizz, me, you, and everybody watching my lopsided ass goddamn eyelash right now, no, you knock that girl down. You hit them walls. You got them draws. That's what you do. That's April. And and even if you didn't want it, April's gonna give it to you anyway. Cause that's just what April do. We we talking about April now. Um, Joy goes and she wakes up Trick Daddy. Trick Daddy in there snoring like a burr in deep hibernation. He was snoring now. Now look here. His snoring is bad, but his snoring ain't got nothing on my stepdaddy snoring. My daddy snores so powerful. It has so much testosterone and manhood behind my daddy's snore you can feel it in your chest when you sleep you can feel what his dreams are because you can feel it coming through his snore i bullshit you not the only other person that snore worse than my daddy was my uncle god rest his soul uncle donnie <sighs> 
baby, no ma'am, no sir, no spam, no ham. We do not like green eggs and ham. But Joy goes and she wakes up um, Trick Daddy and his son, Jalen, to give him their shirts, you know, because I think they're on the same team for the little family um, tug of war and, and all of that stuff that they're doing and whatnot. Now, um, it was funny because Jalen's son said that he was like, because uh, Joy said to him, I see you out here eyeing these baddies. He was like, yeah, you know, cause talking about Carly Red's daughter and probably April ass too because she's young as the rest of them. But now she can't be as young as the rest of them, but she probably is. But she throw that pussy around like she is young as the rest of them. But that's not my business. That ain't none of my damn business. But Trick Daddy tell his son, you want one of these young women. He thought it was going to be some young women out here. He said, you don't want one of these old women because they on their way out the door with trick daddy you ain't on your way in you we know you trick daddy dollars but you you old trick you use use an old trick <laughs> you ain't no new trick you can now trick come on now you got aarp you ain't slinging that these females like that even if you do got the ragra the viagras and all of that you ain't slinging that dick like that Mama D and Pam, Mandisi's mama are talking right now Mama D says she needs to take a hyenas from drinking I said, bitch, you need to take a what? She said she needs to take a hyenas from drinking. I was like, bitch, you mean a hi hiatus from drinking? You know, bless her heart. Mama D tries. B-I-C-T-H. You know Mama D goddamn tries. Bless her goddamn heart. But she she wants to take a hiatus from drinking, which she does need to goddamn do. Because, bitch, if you can't pronounce the word, you don't need nowhere be, be nothing around the shit that's going to influence you and impair you from what the fuck you got to say to do it. Now, she's also talking with Pam about, you know, how she wants to help Scrap and Bambi's relationship get back on track because, you know, suppose, you know, they're going, that supposedly they are going through their little turmoil, which pause for the cause. Did y'all see that Bambi is pregnant now? Yeah, this is late. This video is that late. But I think she's pregnant again. This bitch finna be pregnant two and a half years in a row. Like, girl, slow that damn thing down. I know y'all like to get it in, but bitch, goddamn. Them a lot of babies in a little bit of time. I'm just saying, that ain't my business because I ain't got to take care of them damn babies. But girl, you was already going through it as you doing this show. And you finna... But I'm saying she could have just had to fart real bad. But bitch, you look like he was pregnant, pregnant, like seven, eight months pregnant. Anyway, anywho. Now, goddamn Pam, Mandisi's mama, this is what I don't like. She says that um, ever since Mandisi has gotten out of prison, she feels like Yandy has tried to take him away and had to, you know, keep him all to herself. Which woman? He got a whole damn family. This lash is getting on my damn nerve, y'all. I'm sorry. It's bothering me. It's bothering me. But he got a whole damn family out here. He been away for six years. Yes, he does need to be with his family. You done raised him up to be the man he needs to be so he can be there to take care of the family that he created. I swear for God on everything I own on these damn lashes. I'm not going to be that kind of mama that feels like, my son is my man too. No, that's not what it is. You raise him up so he can be a good man and have a good family and all this and the other like man, these is mama. I couldn't even sympathize with you on that. And 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 I'm the mother of a son. I'm just saying that that's just me. I'm just saying. Mama D sneaky ass also said she got something planned. She got somebody coming to the goddamn field day that's supposed to be throwing everything off. I said it's goddamn Mama D. No fucking good. It's field day. The niggas is coming up the 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 little hill to the field day, drinking Patron and brown liquor. I said, oh, this shit ain't gonna last too goddamn long. These niggas finna get out here sweating. No, they full of that good weed too. They gonna pass the fuck out. Mama D keeps sneaking off on the phone because of course she got this special person that she been talking to or whatnot. This gives uh, Bambi and April an opportunity to sort of talk, which I don't think they would have talked in real life because they just don't seem like the kind that would click together to me. So VH1 told uh, Bambi, go on over there and holla at April and see if she fucked LaFizz last night. April, again, she just like, you know, teeny fizzle pop claims that they didn't mess around, that they just friends now. She said something like, Drew didn't think he was good enough for her. He was good. I don't know, girl. I'm not... They get on my goddamn nerves. Trick Daddy talked to Mandisi's and, you know, just asking him how's everything been since he's been out of prison. He said, you know, it's just hard for him adjusting because, you know, this nigga was out here and doing some shit with some money. So once again, niggas don't trust him like they, you know, they would regularly trust niggas because, you know, for stealing and stop stealing and shitting, you know, all that kind of shit out here. 
Drink Daddy tells him, I don't care where you go from here to the Himalayas to, to, to Rancho Chocomongas. Niggas everywhere gonna know you my nigga. You know what I'm saying? You roll with me. That's that's just what it is. I said, Trick Daddy, you gonna tell him. That's that nigga trick. They're doing a three-legged race, a tug of war. It's just fun. It reminds me, it just makes me miss so much the family reunions that we would have with my family when we would get together. It had already been a little while that we've gotten together before the whole Rona thing happened. So shout out to all of my family, all of my cousins. I miss y'all so much. Hopefully soon we can get together and the next time we get together, it is not for a funeral. I pray to God. But all of my family out there, I miss y'all. I love y'all so much. Just watching this, just it just made me miss my family, y'all. I, I ain't trying to get all mushy and sentimental, but I miss my niggas. I miss them. Finn's team was cheating the whole goddamn time, child. <laughs> Even I was watching the shit and said, nigga, Fizzle Pop, you cheating ass, high yellow bone ass goddamn nigga. Then afterwards, um, they have a big ass water gun fight. It just looked like so much fun. Like I said, me and my family, we, because the same thing when we would have our family reunion, it would be like out in a big park that's been rented out or something. And it's the same thing. We have plenty of food, plenty of drinks family everywhere they playing games over here kids playing over here girls gossiping over here boys is over here doing their thing it would just be so much fun you got your kin folks out there in the cut in the in the car you know what i'm saying we was out there doing what we do it's just fun and watching this made me appreciate all of that um you have carly red that comes in late as hell on a damn megaphone huh her daughter and, and both they fake asses end up coming up. And I mean, they big old fake booties. But then, um, child, then Erica Dixon shows up. I got happy. And I already knew that that's who Mama D's special person was. But Erica Dixon is my bitch. I love Erica Dixon. That's just my goddamn girl. And when I tell you when she showed up, Scrappy and Bambi both look like. Who told this bitch to come? Mama D, you bitch, you. Of course, Mama D invited her. They already goddamn knew that. But Bambi was like, you know what? I'm not finna be upscaled. I'm not finna be embarrassed. I'm finna go ahead and pull her to the side so we can get this shit on out the way goddamn now. Bambi ends up going and pulling Erica to the side, which as a grown woman, I appreciate that. She was like, look here, it's always been this awkwardness between you and I. I just want you to know why you here. It ain't got to be like that. We going to clear the air. Shit is all good. Baby Erica Dixon, just as unbothered and chiseled as her face is, was like, absolutely. We are here because we are family. I have my family. You have yours. I just want us to be cool. I ain't got no problem with you. Never had a problem with you. We are all good. I said, Erica. <laughs> You better goddamn do that, Erica. Erica's my goddamn bitch. I don't give a damn. Of course, Scrappy. Scrappy Dappy, dude. Scrappy get on my goddamn nerves. He's a grown-ass man, child. I feel like he still has some unresolved, some resentment towards Erica because of the way they broke up, because of the way she broke off the engagement. He's still pissed off about that. He's mad about that, and he ain't gonna let that shit go because if he was over it, he wouldn't have no goddamn problem speaking to her ass. He wouldn't have no goddamn problem going over there and being in the same space with her. But the fact that she's there, it bothers him. And like Erica said, he feels like he has to pretend like he hates her in order for everything to sort of, you know, be cool and be okay. I peep that shit. I peep that shit. I said, Scrappy, you was a grown ass goddamn man child. Joy and Sierra, um, they end up chopping up because later on they have like this little, you know, chill night with everybody. Um, Joy and Sierra talking over hookah and Sierra's just basically saying how she misses her. Y'all, this lash is getting on my damn nerve. Oh, I don't know how long I have to do this. But I got one more video to record, baby. It's going to have to do. It's going to have to do. Anyways, Sierra is saying how basically how she misses her stepson. She wish she would have had some more time with her stepson before, you know, he ended up getting murdered. Y'all y'all know that that happened on what the, the, the last season of Love & Hip Hop. Um, 
Because last season or the season before. Anyways, y'all already know the situation that happened with that. She was just basically telling Joy, like, even though you and Trick aren't together, still have that relationship with your stepson, Jalen, because you never know when anything can happen. And I totally feel that because I want to and I do have that relationship with my stepdaughter. I, I've been in her life since she was five years old. She's not my child. And I've told her that before. I'm not your mama. I can never replace your mama. I don't want to be your mama, but I am your stepmama and I will be here for you for anything that you need, regardless of me and your daddy don't end up working out which lord i got papers on that nigga we gonna work out but just know i will always be here for you you are like my child i love you and so you know it was just a good little moment between the two of them i thought it was cute and all that and whatnot uh mama d and erica chopping it up erica tells mama d that she does eventually want to have a conversation with scrappy because they got a child together which she's gonna be 16 y'all only got two years left Really, they don't have to talk. Erica said they talk via text, which is cool. But other than that, I mean, like, child, Scrappy's a grown. He's he's a fucking man, child. Even Bambi had to tell him, like, at some point, you're gonna have to grow up. And you're going to have to have a conversation with her. Even but after she's becoming 18, what if she goes off to college? What if, you know, she she ends up getting married and, and there are certain things that y'all have to do together as a mother and a father? You know, you're going to have to do that eventually. Scrappy is just the fucking man child. That's it. Carly Red is sitting up and talking with the youngsters, Jalen and Imani, Jack's, uh, Jock's son and um, Trick Daddy's son, right? And basically, they're all sitting up and talking about their parents. Carly Red was saying how her and her mother were not close growing up, that her mother wasn't around a lot. That's because Carly Red, y'all know she was a model. She was probably a video vixen or whatever. She was out here trying to get it and, you know, secure a future for her daughter. Now, Jock's son says that him and Jock didn't have the best relationship as he was growing up. They're better now. But once again, he wasn't around a lot because he had to tour and he was out making music and this and the other. Now, Trick Daddy's son, Jalen says that him and his dad are like best friends. I remember seeing different pictures of, if that's the same little boy, which I'm sure, I'm sure it is, the same little boy, he was always around in different pictures and stuff like that. He says that him and his dad are real close. They're like best friends or whatnot, right? Now, this is the part that irritated me when Paris came up talking about what y'all doing? Uh-huh. Don't be over here kissing Paris. Get you some business. Go on. You need to be out here chasing one of these little girls. Because we, we we all know. Stop it. Go on. Get, get you one of these little girls out here. Settle down. Get you some business. Now, stay out of the folk business. That just get annoying after a while. Now, Ray J and Jasmine up there flirting. Jasmine, don't fall in that shit. Don't fall for that shit now. Ray J done fuck a lot of these hoes out here. And and you can you can you you gonna end up being one on next one on that list that he done fuck these hoes out here. And I ain't saying that he's dirty or nothing like that. I'm just saying, you know, he for the streets. He for the streets. Now don't 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 no. Maybe if it was Ray J in his prime. But not this Ray J. This this daddy Ray J now. Now you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Erica tries to holler at Scrappy, but once again, Scrappy's a grown fucking man child and he doesn't want to talk. Why? Because he still got feelings for that girl and, and for the and he don't want to look at her in her eye because he already know that that same old love and feeling gonna come back and he gonna have to deal with that shit. Mm-hmm. I said it. It ends with um Erica. I mean not Erica. Bambi and Scrap is in their room talking. I don't know if they arguing or what. You can't really make out the audio, but it pretty much ends from there. It's it was made to set up and seem like they were arguing, which I hope they weren't arguing. If they weren't VH1 or whatever, that's their business and you're wrong for setting it up like that. That's how these goddamn couples don't end up working out. But again, I think Bambi pregnant. If she ain't pregnant, bitch, you need to go get you some of my lads to get that gas out your belly, girl, because it's looking real preggers out here in these streets. But anyways, y'all, that was my review. Hopefully y'all liked it. <laughs> if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo gonna see y'all in the next video. Peace out.